And that was all uniform. What does uniform mean? Constant speed. Only the direction is changing. So we knew when the, when the speed stays constant, but the direction changes, we knew the net force had to be in the radial direction. Non-uniform means both the speed and the direction are changing. So let's take a, an example here, just how about like a, a, something moving around a circular track. So in this case, what happens? At time one, we've got velocity v1. And at time two, we have velocity v2. It's a different direction now. It's moving along a curved path. And it's, I tried to draw that arrow longer. It's now going faster. So what must have happened to this? What had to happen to this object to keep it moving in a circular path? Had it had to have what and what causes that change in direction? Force, right? Because the velocity changed, changed, right? When the direction changes, the velocity changes because velocity has one of its components is direction. So there had to be acceleration. What's acceleration and some net force acting on the object? There had to be a net force in the radial direction to cause the thing to change direction. So we know there's some kind of a force acting on it in the radial direction that's responsible for the, for the uh, radial acceleration, which can't change the speed because it's perpendicular to the direction. It can't change the speed, but it can change the direction. Now, its speed also changed. Right? So the velocity has two components. So the direction changed because of this radial force. So what could have caused the speed to change? A force in the direction of motion. Okay? So there must have been some force acting on it. I'll call it F tangential. F tangent. That caused a tangential acceleration. So a force acting in the direction of motion can change the speed, but not the direction. A force acting perpendicular to the direction of motion can change the direction, but not the speed. And if you combine those two, then you can change speed and direction. So if there's a, a net force in the radial direction, then you have some radial acceleration. If there's a net force in the tangent direction, you have some tangential acceleration changing the speed. And we add those two together to get the total acceleration. I'm going to kind of redraw it over here. I'm running out. So we have, let's do it in uh, you know, a radial, a tangential. These are vectors. So how do we add them? We add them tip to tail, right? And our net, that's a total. So the total acceleration is the radial acceleration plus the tangential acceleration. And you add them vectorally, the vector addition. So you should be able to figure out the tangential acceleration from a change in speed and the radial acceleration from, from uh, centripetal uh, forces, right? <coughs> centripetal acceleration. And we add them vectorally to come up with the total acceleration. What would happen if it was slowing down? Maybe you could draw, add the net forces V1, V2. Is that obviously smaller? Mm -hmm. 
So see if you can draw in the forces or the acceleration. Let's just draw a, a line for the, an arrow for the radial acceleration and an arrow for the tangential acceleration and then a, the arrow for the total acceleration. Check with your neighbor. Do you have a radial acceleration that looks like that? Do you have a tangential acceleration that looks like that? Because it's slowing down, right? The acceleration must be opposite the direction of the velocity. And you add them together. And you get a net acceleration total acceleration that looks something like that in that direction.